skeleton hour, five eleven, <laughs> take one. <laughs> CBS presents this program in color. From Television City in Hollywood. The Red Skelton Hour. Grab a normal chair or a formal chair, Chip and Dale or half a white. If you listen to what we say to you, you'll be sitting pretty tonight. Take a wing chair or a swing chair, any kind that's high or low. Once you seat yourself, you can treat yourself to this crazy comedy show. Our guest stars, Robert Morse. Much and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I had a lot of things happen to me this week. My daughter, Valentina, knitted me a tie. I won't say it's long, but I've been doing somersaults all day. <laughs> the other day, Valentina came in. She says, let's get a dog. I says, well, a dog? She says, yeah, let's get a bird dog. I said, we don't have a bird. <laughs> she says, well, let's get a, a sled dog. I said, we don't have a sled. She says, well, let's get a bloodhound. Work your way out of that way. <laughs> hey, I got, I got a joke. Gertrude and Heathcliff, the two seagulls, he, he says, the... Well, sir, he said, did you hear what happened? <laughs> he said, did you hear what happened over at the zoo? She says, no, what happened? She says, you know that kangaroo that adopted that little monkey? She kicked him out. <laughs> he says, well, I don't blame her. How would you like to have somebody bouncing a coconut against the wall of your stomach all day? <laughs> you know what happened backstage a while ago? Willie Dahl, our, our stage manager here, said to our producer, Mr. Burns, he says, Mr. Burns, I'm going to have to ask for a raise. He says, I'm doing the work of three men. Mr. Burns says, well, I can't give you a raise, but you tell me who those other two guys are, I'll fire them. <laughs> <laughs> we all kid old Willie Dahl all the time around here. He's always giving parties. He gives parties. He celebrates anything. Like the other day, <laughs> there's a group of the guys here on the show. They all got together. They says, you, you want to come to a party? We're celebrating. I said, what are you celebrating? He said, Wednesday. <laughs> I says, today's Sunday. He says, when do you think we started? <laughs> they call you up at any time out here and say, come as you are. Well, I was embarrassed the other night. I was taking a shower. <laughs> so I lathered up and went over. <laughs> <laughs> then I was really embarrassed. I didn't know it was raining. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and Dean Martin came to a party uh, the other night. <laughs> Sober, and nobody recognized him. <laughs> hey, old Dean was out uh, at the uh, golf course, down at Tamras Golf Course, and uh, he was eating something off the ground. I says, what are you doing? He says, mushrooms. I love mushrooms. I says, those are toadstools, and they're poisonous. He says, oh, is that what that toad was trying to tell me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we kid Dean about drinking. He only drinks half as much as he used to. He's cut out the chasers. <laughs> Another thing I read in the paper out here, that uh, our uh, trade papers, that the Italians are going to make Western movies. Can you imagine that? An Italian Western? Boy, the, the only trouble, the Indians, instead of yelling, Geronimo, they yell, Mamma Mia. <laughs> <laughs> but to be an, Indian, an Italian Indian, that would be good. You have to really be an actor. Can you imagine walking up to Sophia Loren and saying, ugh? <laughs> hey, oh, hey, talking about uh, foreign countries, look what I got. What do you think this is? What do you think this is? 
A sunglass for an Englishman. <laughs> hey, speaking of Englishmen, did you see where Cary Grant is going to become a father at the age of 60, boy? Becoming a father at the age of 60, he's going to be the first guy to join Medicare and PTA at the same time. <laughs> though that marriages can be successful. Although I was up in Vegas last summer and I went over to the courthouse and, and I saw some divorces taking place and there was one fella standing there. I felt sorry for this poor guy. He looked like somebody had been on a sightseeing tour through a meat grinder. <laughs> he was standing there and his wife was talking to him. She says, what are you, a man or a mouse? And he didn't say anything. He just stood there eating his cheese sandwich too. <laughs> And she was standing there, and she had on a dress that was covered with great big buttons. See, when she sat down, it would stack up, and she looked like a sink full of dirty dishes. <laughs> <laughs> she had about 300 buttons on this sleeve, about 300 buttons on that sleeve. The front of her dress was covered with buttons, and her husband standing over in the corner holding his pants up with a nail. <laughs> But you know, out here, uh, divorces are, they, they, that community property makes it kind of rough. And if you don't pay your alimony, you know, they put you in jail, see? So now with that in mind, I'd like to do a little short pantomime of a little fella in jail, see, on, on, on the work gang. And a little weak guy, he'd never been in jail before. And a little guy, a little pantomime. <laughs>
early portals, then you will be heard when passing his word along. So if life eternal is your goal, shape up and save your soul. Don't wait till they call the gold on Judgment Day. We're talking to you. Sing hallelujah. And you first do the blues. You undo the blues. You're gonna shoot the blues. Away. Hallelujah. 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 Shoot the blues away. Tonight, Red Skelton as George Appleby and Bobby Morse as Dr. Harvey Butterfingers in Somebody Down Here Hates Me. Harvey, uh, this is your sister Clara Appleby. Now, don't worry. My husband, George, put you through medical school, and he'll pay for furnishing your new office. Yeah. Well, so what if holding two jobs at the same time makes him sick? He can be your first patient. <laughs> Bye. Come on, lady. Where's my dinner? George, you've got customers waiting. Yeah, George. I'm starved. Where's my spaghetti with the garlic salt? Coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up. <laughs> Boy, no wonder those Italian Alpsers are tall. They're trying to get away from the garlic. <laughs> there you are. There's some spaghetti that'll stick your rib. That's if you like sticky rib. <laughs> your plate's empty. Oh, good heavens. Did you chew that or inhale it? I don't remember eating it. Well, you can't blame me for your lousy memory, buddy. <laughs> There's my spaghetti on a fan. Well, leave it alone. It needs all the air it can get. <laughs> I want my spaghetti. Even after it hit the fan? It's out of here. Right. Oh, uh, could I have some mustard for my hamburger? Mustard coming right up, sir. He's coming right up. Where's the barber? George, stop loafing and get busy on your other job. Where's the barber? The barber. The barber. The barber. The barber. I keep forgetting. I got to around here. I'm too busy. Coming, sir. There you are. Sit right down. There's no wait. Right in your chair. There's no waiting, sir. That's it. I'll bet you a nickel you want a haircut. Yeah, this stuff is driving me nuts. <laughs> you ought to sue your last barber boy. He gave you one that's high on the side with a hole in the middle. <laughs> well, I, I'd like a haircut. A haircut. All right, sir. We'll see what we can do for you there. Ah, let's see a haircut. There we are. Now, how about that one, Ringo? <laughs> Shall I trim this one? Yeah, but please, not too much off the top. <laughs> there, give that to your girl and she can put it in her locket. <laughs> That'll be two dollars, Ringo. Two dollars for one hair? Well, 50 cents for the haircut and a dollar and a half for looking for it. <laughs> You out of here. Uh, a little shave will do you good. <laughs> Wait a minute, I don't need a shave. You don't need a shave. No. Just run your hands over your face, buddy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I need a shave. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you throw that hot towel in my face? Well, you don't think I want to burn my hands, do you? <laughs> Heaven, here, I'll get you lathered up here in no time. Just lay right back there. Waiter, where's that mustard? Oh, the mustard. Oh, yes, sir. I'm coming. I'm coming, sir. The mustard. I'll tell you, I'm busier than Frank Sinatra on a Saturday night. <laughs> I'll get it for you. Get a move on, George. Okay, I got to move on. <laughs> there you are, sir. Well, where's the fellow that waited on me before? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this isn't mustard. It's soap. Well, look at it this way. You're going to have the cleanest tapeworm in town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no mustard. <laughs> hey, Bob, what about my shave? 
No, I got coming right up, sir. Coming right up, sir. Hey, where's the barber? Oh, wait, I'll be right back. The barber. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> I'll have you shaved in a jiffy, sir. Do you have a picture of yourself? Uh, yes. Why? In case I cut something off, I'll know where to put it back. <laughs> Western. Oh, come on. Hurry up with the shave. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, sir. There we are. Ouch! You cut me! You mean at my age I'm still able to cut the mustard? <laughs> Well, why don't you throw yourself on a bun and tell everybody you're a hot dog? <laughs> Wait, oh, I can't eat this hamburger. What's the matter? George, this man can't eat a hamburger like that. I ordered it rare, and it's all covered with the uh, shaving cream. Well, you can't get anything rarer than that, buddy. <laughs> oh, here comes my brother, the brand new surgeon. Oh, that chiseler. At your service, Dr. Butterfingers. <laughs> Harvey, uh, are you getting ready to perform an operation? No, I just had a manicure and I'm drying my nails. <laughs> well, thank heavens. I thought somebody put starch in your deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Doc, you gotta help me. I'm bleeding. Oh, I'm helping. I'm bleeding. I, I can't help you bleed. Some things you have to do for yourself. <laughs> you know, with a line like that, don't ever pull it when a guy's got a razor in his hand. <laughs> George, 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 you know that sending me, sending me through medical school has left you with, well, with very little money. And you've come to thank me. No, to get the rest of it. I... <laughs> Wait, I'll get some money for that broken down hamburger. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Are we... Well, boy, that went faster than a porcupine that backed into himself. <laughs> Better check him out. He may have some money hidden on him. But see, that's the way the doctors know how much to charge you. They listen to your wallet. <laughs> oh. You've got a lot of iron in your blood. <laughs> well, that's ridiculous. All I eat is pork. Then you're full of pig iron. <laughs> that's it, by the way. <laughs> I need money, George. I really need it badly to buy, well, buy some more medical books. More? Why? Well, to stand on when I examine tall patients. <laughs> I'll make you deal, kid. Yeah. I'll furnish your office if you'll operate on Clara. Yeah, I see. Well, what, what do you want removed? As much of her as possible. <laughs> I wonder if Clara heard that. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think she heard it. <laughs> It's on my mind. I have to make a decision. I'll need a good nurse. Salary is no object. George Appleby, my brother-in-law, he's going to pay for everything. Now, what are your qualifications? Well, I am an honored graduate in nursing. Three years at the Mayo Clinic, four years at Cedars of Lebanon Hospital, and five years at Johns Hopkins. That's very nice. Thank you. And what are your qualifications? <clears throat> for two weeks, I was head stripper at the Pink Pussycat. Boom, yes, boom. Well. <laughs> I think you've had the kind of experience that I'm looking for. <laughs> a stripper? Oh, great time saver. Think how fast you get the patient's clothes off. Later no, I've seen everything. Well, with a little luck, so will I. <laughs> Would you get the door, darling? Please, for me. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> George, look what I got for you. A thermometer. Oh. Look at that. There's for your office. Isn't that nice? It sure we is. Get... Can I do something for you? <laughs> you know, I may be married, but I still think single. <laughs> <laughs> Laverne, dear, Laverne, will you go into my private office and stack these books? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. She looks good, you know, stacking things. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like she could stack anything. Now, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what's a good thing about an unhappy marriage? What? You sure save up an awful lot of drool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I look at the way. 
Just look at the way that you furnish my office. As a doctor, I mean, you haven't even given me a, a single skeleton. No skeleton? Nothing. Well, how do you keep your skin from sliding off? I cross my legs and I grip my teeth. <laughs> Don't worry, I've got you a skeleton. All right. I've got you something here. Wait till you see this. Well, I've got you a skeleton. I don't know, but there's a joke for both of them. <laughs> 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 looks like... <laughs> Looks like the chorus line from an old Dracula musical. Oh, it's a big joke now. That's huh? one. Yeah. That's one. Yeah. The fellow, the fellow on the inn uh, was on the drinking man's diet. Yeah, that's two. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing but bones. Mm. Yeah. Really? <laughs> I think he overdid it. I wonder how the poor lady went the end there. <laughs> she was waiting on a crowded bus for a man to give her a seat. <laughs> Of those little gems. Yeah, right. She should cut the Dr. Butterfinger. Yes. Can I do anything else for you? <gasps> oh! Oh. Oh. <laughs> no thanks. No thanks. You're doing enough already. Don't be scared. Uh, there's nothing to worry about. These people are dead. Dead. No dead. life. No life. <gasps> Just... Maybe you better hang me on a hook, too. <laughs> George. What is that nurse doing with her arms around well, you? Well, she was trying to shake hands with herself, and I got in her way. <laughs> How would you like a big, fat lip? I married one. <laughs> oh, if only all you people weren't watching. <laughs> Do me a favor, please. Take uh, Dick and Liz out of here. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do, get your own writers, buddy? <laughs> Doctor, yes. where shall I put them? Well, I hang them in the window. I, it pays to advertise. Yeah. <laughs> Take them outside there. Oh, so long, Jerry. Oh, yes. Come on. So long, Dick. <laughs> What's that? Uh, sounds like a car. There's a car coming. Boy, that smog is murder today, isn't it? <laughs> Dick and Liz, huh? <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Looks like a patient's coming. He just drove up with a Las Vegas license plate. What kind of a car? A lot of, no, no, no car, just Las Vegas plate. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe he had a bad night at the crap table, huh? Well, whatever he's got is gonna be expensive. Right? Make it good. I ought to get my money back. Doctor. Right Doctor. No, no, him, him, him. 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 <laughs> Doctor, I, I, I can't catch my breath. Well, you're lucky. I just did. <laughs> Tell me, please, could you tell me, uh, what, what, what is your problem? I mean, outside of having him for a doctor. I mean, what's well, your problem? Well, uh, every time I bend over like this and straighten up like this, I get all dizzy. Well, don't bend over and straighten up like that. Yeah, yeah that's right. How else can he put his pants on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looks to me, you know, it really looks to me like you've got something that might be called, um, Berry Berry. And if you do, that'll be, uh... Hundred dollars. A hundred dollars? Well, that's cheap. That's fifty dollars a berry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to listen in here, all right? You yeah, listen. listen. <laughs> Just as I thought, thrombosis. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I haven't been feeling up to par. Par? Par, par. <laughs> what day is this? This is Wednesday. Why? What's the matter? Wednesday? This is my data. This is my data. Data play. Wait oh, a minute. What about me? Well, get your own portion. <laughs> Wait a minute, Harvey. You can't leave a patient with his wallet hanging out. But he doesn't need surgery. Nothing has to come out. Well, a, 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 a patient's waiting and he ducks out? Well, what kind of a doctor is that? What's that again? I said a patient's waiting and he ducks out. What kind of a doctor is that? I think you set that up real nice. <laughs> There's an old saying, a doctor that ducks out must be the quack. <laughs> but Dr. Butterfingers, shouldn't I have a club in my hand? With what I have in mind, I wouldn't take a chance. But when do I swing? Right after the game, we're going to swing. <laughs> Dr. Butterfingers, after all the money that your brother-in-law, George Appleby, spent for your medical education, how could you just go off and leave your first patient? Well, you can't expect me to take care of him out here at the golf course. Oh, yes, you can. 
All in, Dr. Butterfingers. You're wanted in surgery. Get me out of here. I don't need an operation. You're going to get one or you don't get your pants back, I'll tell you that. <laughs> As a doctor, you're ridiculous. Well, so has Ben Casey, and he's been on for three years. <laughs> George, how can I perform surgery? I, I, I don't even know what, what I'm operating for. Well, just take out everything, and anything you come to that looks bad, throw it away and put everything back. Yeah. <laughs> I only came to you in the first place because I had trouble with my breathing. Don't worry, I'll put a stop to that. <laughs> <laughs> But this is the first time I've been sick. Well, then you can start off even. This is his first operation. <laughs> Open your mouth. Come on. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It looks like a bowling alley with one pin standing. <laughs> take a look at this. Mm. Oh, it's nice, dark, and damp in there. Have you ever thought about raising mushrooms? Go <laughs> <laughs> good with your liver. <laughs> Say, shall I uh, tee up the patient, Doc? <laughs> yes, I, I'm afraid that I'll, I'll have to operate. Why? Yeah. Why? So I can finish my golf game. Oh, if the operation isn't successful, who should we notify? Him, I think he'd like to be the first one to know. <laughs> I, wait a minute, wait, there's no re please, please, there's no reason to be nervous. You'll be as good as new in my uh, three days. Four! All right, four days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Doc, here. Oh, that's good. There's your instrument. There, now, I start cutting there. You all cut up, you tell me something. Boiled? I haven't been drunk in a month. <laughs> we got a tournament going. Can I play through? If the doctor makes a big enough incision, yeah. <laughs> hey, why do sergeants always, uh, surgeons, <laughs> why do surgeons always hold their hands like that? In case the operation fails, they can always do, oh boy. <laughs> Look out, here it comes! Here it comes! <laughs> I heard it go by, but I didn't hear it. George, George, you all right? I'm all right. Oh, George. My goodness, George! You, there's a golf ball that's stuck in your ear. Huh? I, there, there's a golf ball that's stuck in your ear. That's funny, it sounds like you said there's a golf ball stuck in my ear. Well, for my first operation, just think, an ingrown golf ball. How about that? Not only will you make the medical journal, but you all hit the, hit the sport page, too. <laughs> you Don't are... touch that ball, you'll spoil my birdie. <laughs> well, you're not doing my birdie any good, either. <laughs> He's right, George. George, huh? according to the ground rules, he's got to play the ball where it lies. Oh, no, Ken, well, you be careful. Careful with my ear. I don't want to break up a set. <laughs> don't worry, George. Vincent Van Gogh painted a masterpiece with one ear. Yeah, imagine what he could have done if he used a paintbrush. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, look! You just hit George's wife, Clara! Oh, oh my eardrums. Oh. <laughs> well, here comes. How do you like that? Just when she can't talk, I lose my hearing. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, we would like you to meet our guest star for tonight, a very talented young man, a uh, star of the Broadway stage, motion pictures, and of television, Bobby Morris. <laughs> and I would like you to know that Bobby won the Tony Award for his fine performance in that Broadway hit, How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. And thank you, Red. Actually, though, being in a great show like that, of course, is a combination of many great talents. And I was just glad to be in such a good show as How to Succeed. And I'm glad to be here tonight. You're a very <laughs> kind man. You're very kind. Not only do you do comedy roles like that, but you play dramatic parts, too, don't you? Yes, I, I'm, I'm doing a, a dramatic part now in a, in a, in a uh, studio here in Hollywood. And uh, big, big picture, and it's a, I hope you all see it. The name of the picture is called The Gangster's Goodbye. Gangster's goodbye. Yes, I hope to see Could it. you do a little scene for us here? Well, I don't know. Would you like to maybe uh, uh, we could do a scene together? What would I do? I don't know. There's a lot of scenes, but here's one, I think. Why don't you play, uh, you play Kelly the cop. Yeah. 
and I'll be the gangster, all right? Sure, I, I, you I, shoot. I knock you off, right. all right? All right. Okay, I'll be Kelly the cop. All right. <laughs> <laughs> It's only an hour show. <laughs> hey, would you die over here in the lights? They can't... <laughs> What's my next line? <laughs> oh, they, they, they got me, Red. They got you, huh? Red. I'm, <laughs> I'm Kelly. Right. Yeah. Hey, Kelly. They got me. Smarts, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me your name. What do you want to know my, my name for? So oh. I can tell your dear old mother. That's silly. My mother knows my name. Maybe we'll do another one, okay? Would you like to do another one? No, oh, I think that did it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Tom Hansen dancers in one of England's most popular singing groups. Then you're bound to see 
now The Silent Spot, starring Red Skelton as the Mad Scientist.
Don't go away. Red will be back in a minute. Here he is again, Red Skelton. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of our sponsors and staff, we sincerely hope that our entertainment and our products has brought happiness into your home. So until next week, we thank you for our visit. Until then, goodbye, and may God bless. Good night. Save your chair, folks, we don't care, folks, if it's modern or antique. While we feel so here, keep on sitting here, cause we'll all be back in a week. So goodbye, until the moment when we'll see you all again. To our friends near and far, This program was pre-recorded. Art Gilmore speaking. <laughs>